very good morning. You're watching Melt. I'm Ritvika Gupta. As marketers continue to grapple with the ongoing COVID pandemic, consumers are shifting their behaviors and seeking out brands they can trust. Trust has emerged as a fundamental driver of purchase, according to the latest Edelman Trust Barometer Special Report titled Brands Amidst Crisis. Looking ahead, what will drive brand trust in the new year? Anand Rangaswamy, editor of Melt, speaks to Richard Edelman, CEO of Edelman, to understand what businesses in India are expected to focus on for 2021. Let's get ready to Melt with Richard Edelman. Hello, Richard. Good morning. And uh, Happy New Year to you, Richard. Thank you so much. So, uh, as usual, I love talking to you when we've got complex uh, issues facing brands and facing companies and indeed facing countries. So uh, the first question is a kind of motherhood statement. What do you think we will see in the world of brands and companies in 2021? So we're at a moment when there's huge expectations of companies and brands to fix the ills of society. Um, something like 90% of people in India say that it's the responsibility of corporations to stand up and speak up on treatment of women or inequality or all these things that traditionally would be the role of government. And it's um, actually a phenomenon that's global. Um, it's true in Western Europe, it's true in the States, um, in part because of the number of problems and also the sense that brands um, somehow are more flexible and that they are you know, subject to brand democracy and that uh, people can vote with their pocketbooks and uh, buy it or not buy it. And also there's a new movement with employees. They feel very empowered to push a company's policy. And you know, it started with Google two years ago and now it's really spread from the tech industry into the broader uh, community. So it's a big change for you. Right. So uh, this year for the first time you've been measuring uh, the trust in brands, you know, up to now we've been seeing trust in companies. Uh, trust in brands, how does that look uh, to you, uh, Richard? As in, so It's interesting that there's higher trust in brands uh, in uh, India and China uh, than there is in Europe and the US. It's also interesting, though, that expectation versus delivery is about a 30-point gap, both in Europe and uh, in India. The sense is that um, brands have not yet delivered sufficiently on changing their own house, meaning making their house more diverse. Um, they haven't necessarily delivered also on changing the imagery uh, of brands such that uh, you see people of all races, colors, everything else, the, the beautiful rainbow that's India. You know, we don't just want to see the hugely educated, you know, IIT graduate. We also want to see the gal from the countryside. And uh, so it's a new expectation. And I think brands are moving to towards it. Right. You know, Richard, I've been talking to you about the Edelman Trust Barometer, I think from 2008 or nine or something like that. Yeah. It's a long, long time. And the, the study has evolved. Uh, you're doing more uh, in the countries that you operate in. For example, in India, your sample size is much bigger today. Uh, both in terms of informed, uh, informed uh, uh, citizens as well as otherwise. So uh, now tell me, what, what do you find in India which is divergent in terms of trust in companies and brands compared to a more mature market like the US or, the, or Europe? Is there anything you've seen surprising? Well, India has a much higher trust level in its institutions, just across the board from business, government, media, and NGOs. Um, so in the high 70s. Um, contrast that to the states, which is in the 40s or 50s. And similarly, um, you see, though, the, the start of a so-called mass class divide in India. Um, this has been true in the US, UK, France, um, the gap between the elite, the more you know, educated, et cetera, wealthier, and the mass population where it's more flatline and the elite trust is soaring. So in India now, it's a 15 point gap between the mass and the elites. We didn't see that in 2009. Uh, so there's a you know sense of have and have not, and uh, I think uh, COVID has magnified that uh, divide. So, so what is the implication of that gap? If you can explain it. Uh, well, I think the, the implication CEOs is, and CMOs watching it. I think the implication of the uh, mass class divide is a tendency to populism, a tendency to uh, say that uh, maybe the rich gets too much, 
Um, and uh, there's there's a you know new demand for um, reform in a way. And it almost goes back in, in my country to the era of Teddy Roosevelt um, of, uh, you know, split up the big companies. You saw the action on Facebook, which was surprising. Um, but if you follow the logic of, you know, the big companies have too much power, et cetera, there will be more of that. Right. Do you see that happening in other countries as well? You certainly see it happening in the U.S. Well, so you see it now transversal, um, you know, in surprising countries like uh, Canada, um, you know, happy Canada, <laughs> you see a mass class divide uh, similarly coming in Germany. Uh, so it's a it's it's much less a phenomenon in developing markets. But India is ahead in this. Right. So, you know, it's a question I've uh, asked you normally at the end of the interview. Uh, right now, if you had uh, 10 minutes with the top five uh, CEOs of India, uh, looking at your study, if you just had the 10 minutes, what would you tell them to do or to beware of or take action on? So to me, Brand India is a great shame. Um, the reality of uh, Brand India is it's down with uh, China and Mexico like this. To me, it shouldn't. It should be ahead. Um, it should be more similar to the US, deeply advanced in a technology sense, deeply um, humanitarian um, and, and uh, intellectual. Um, and so, you know, we need to fix that. The second is, I, I also think that um, Indian brands um, on beyond sort of the IT services are relatively unknown. You know, you've got, um, uh, the, the eco car of the future, perhaps, um, in, in being built in India. Most people don't know that. And so it, it really has to come. I mean, I heard Mr. Modi uh, speak uh, to the World Economic Forum, and he was damn persuasive, but we just don't see it enough. You know, our, our media more covers uh, China and um, Western Europe. And so I, I just can give you the American view. I mean, you know, India has to work harder to get its uh, stories across and get its business heroes, particularly from the manufacturing side, out there. Uh, and uh, what is the prescription for that? You've told me what the problem is. Uh, well, I just again think that uh, there needs to be time investment by uh, more than the uh, CEO of Tata. And I think it's, listen, it is easier for Indian companies to sell into Africa or Asia, no doubt. Um, but if you ultimately want to make it in the world, um, you know, it's important that you do take on the markets in, in, in um, developed markets. Right. So you've got uh, one minute with Anand Mahindra. What do you tell him? You've got one minute. That's what you have. You're doing a great job running your company. The reputation of the country, though, needs you to stand up and speak up on behalf of Indian business. And there's a necessity of expressing the values but also the value of uh, Indian business, that the companies are entrepreneurial, that they're well run, that they have a good labor relation, and that uh, they can be globally competitive. Right. Now, this takes me back to the early 60s, I think. Uh, John F. Kennedy, when he said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. You know, I saw that speech. I was a little boy. <laughs> I, I, I was three years old, but I didn't see the speech. But uh, I, stayed but, home from, I stayed home from school because I wanted to watch Kennedy be inaugurated. I pretended to be sick. Right. Don't tell my mom. <laughs> no, I won't. Or your school teacher. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what you're saying is it is not enough for government to do its bit. It is also for corporate India to do its bit. Uh, I, I, do you believe that corporate India is just not doing enough? I just don't think that corporate India understands that... Um, in order for a country image to come along, you have to do what Samsung has done. Samsung has dragged the image of Korea up to such a level that it is now 15 or 20 points higher than India. And so you explain to me why that is, other than it has some famous companies, LG, Samsung, Hyundai, where the products do speak for themselves to a certain extent, um, but the company makes an effort um, and has a, a sense of, you know, it's a big global player and it insists on competing everywhere. So if you had to name the three, four or five Indian companies which could, uh, you know, do attempt to do what Samsung did, which would those be? Well, I think, you know, 
you have the, the obvious sort of uh, emphasis, um, you know, cognizant, but, you know, and Todd has done a great job of, of expressing itself. But I love Godridge, Adi Godridge, and uh, also Sunil Mittal in, in uh, telecom. These are outstanding global players offering competitive products around the world. What, what do you think they should be doing? What is the, again, the prescription? You know, this is almost like we've heard before, you know, when we first heard about nation branding in India, you know, 20 years ago, uh, we were told these are the things that need to, need to be done and nothing has happened. So what is stopping it from happening and what needs to be done? I think Indian business has to be serious about its uh, ability to compete globally and um, recognize that part of it is brand India, that uh, it's not enough just to sell your company or your products. It's also the halo effect that you get from um, being seen as an aggressive competitor uh, able to meet the fiercest competition on any field. Okay, we move on from this to, uh, I think, uh, the biggest concern of the day, which is trust in media. Because sure. trust in media, from your numbers going down everywhere. So what do you think needs to be done to fix the trust in media? Or is it that consumers are going to walk with their feet again and stop buying media altogether? What is going to happen? Well, look, I think the media is in a uh, downward spiral, which is to say, um, because of economic pressures, uh, there's more of a tendency for uh, controversial headlines, which then generates uh, social buzz and genera generates viewership. And too much of it uh, perhaps is uh, oriented to the extremes as opposed to the middle, because there's more heat on the uh, wings. Mm -hmm. And I think the... the tendency must be to come back to being an objective view of the world and let the social conversation um, be uh, driven by fact as opposed to exaggeration. And there's also a real problem of the media being driven in my country by tweets. And it seems to me we should be driven by news. <laughs> and uh, so in a certain way, um, maybe the tweets generated um, viewership. And of course, the cable news um, was hugely uh, increased in viewership over the last uh, four years with Trump. But is it really good business to be seen as ideological? I don't think so. And also, you know, you're a newsman, you know, Anant, you, 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 you want to be driven by events as opposed to driven by um, things that are, you know, whatever's in the president's mind. Right. So why do you think uh, this is not a U.S. phenomenon, it's a global phenomenon? Why do you think news brands are going to the fringes and not staying at the center? Is it only driven by money or is it beyond that? What is it? I think that it's um, also driven by a sense of, you know, newstainment, if I can put it this way or not. It's news and entertainment, and that the first thing is we have to attract people, and then the second thing is we educate them. And yeah. I don't agree with that. I think that uh, we need to, again, re-educate the audience that our job is in media facts. Now, what's fascinating to me is that the most trusted institution in India is my employer. And that means that trust has become local. And it means that, in fact, the company newsletter which used to be laughed at, is now an authoritative source of information on COVID or all sorts of other um, issues, sustainability, et cetera. So it tells you that there's a real information void, huh? Right. You know, uh, a few years ago, Edelman across the world started investing in content. Uh, it's something you did, you know, which was previously outsourced. I think you brought it in-house. Uh, do you think more companies should do that? And the second question is, should people at the board levels be involved in dissemination of internal communication? I just think that it's an urgent cry for help from the public saying, I need facts. You know, don't tell me about hydroxychloroquine or sorts of all sorts of other magical uh, remedies for COVID. That's just a joke. And we, we have to have companies um, making sure that uh, their employees understand why to get a vaccine when it becomes available. And th that, that in fact, social distancing, mask wearing, all these things are just standard behavior as opposed to something extraordinary. And 
that's where companies also have to play a big role in uh, resetting their restaurant distances or making sure that um, people can still actually function at work in a safe way with plastic divides or more space or A and B teams. Business has to reimagine um, because otherwise people won't uh, come back. You know, they'll, they'll just work from, uh, from home. And that has a really negative effect over time on real estate and mass transit and all these things. So again, I think business has to step up here. And yes, I think board members should be very interested in whether their companies are putting out quality information. Every company should be its own media company to support what you do, Anant, and other top-class journalists. Right. So uh, if we have to uh, sort of go into crystal ball gazing, uh, 2021, uh, how do you see, see the year ending? If I had to have this conversation with you uh, in December 2021, just before Hanukkah, bang in the middle of Hanukkah, what would it be like? I'm presuming it's in December next year. It might not, of course. Well, Hanukkah will be in December. But okay. look, Anand, the truth is the first few months of the year are going to be tough. Um, it is going to be before most people get vaccinated. I think there's still a lot of uh, fear of travel, of going to see clients, of so-called normal life. I was on a call with CEOs um, earlier in the week. They think it's September before we get back to a normal kind of situation. And so that's, you know, two thirds of the year. And so Business is going to just have to fight its way back. That's what we've had to do at Edelman. You know, we've, you know, in, in, in the first part of the COVID epidemic, you know, our fees fell substantially. And then right. we fought our way back uh, two thirds of the way. So I'm very proud of my team. But it's been a slog. And we cannot give people any delusions about magical thinking. We have to be honest. We have to say, okay, we can get through this together. I think we have to be very clear to employees not to become workaholics, that they, they, even if they're working at home, they have to stop working after 10 or 11 hours. That's enough. And we have to also say, don't take chances with your health. Don't come on trains or other things if uh, you can work remote. Be sure if you do go on a train that you go off peak. Let's just try to help people get through the next uh, period until they get the jab and tell them why they should get the vaccine. Right. Uh, do you think that uh, revenue-wise for uh, consumer-facing companies, 2021 will be better than 2020? Or is, it's I think it's going to be two halves of a year, Anant. I think the right. first half is going to be a bit of a push. Um, right. The second half, hopefully, we'll get a revival of demand and a sense of more normal, such that people are willing to part with some money. Um, but right. in the moment, the U.S. savings rate is the highest it's been in 50 years because people are scared. They also don't have opportunity to spend on any, anything like trips or, you know, it, it, the, the usual uh, kind of um, happy moments. You're just bunkered down a bit. Right. And your take on working from home, is this going to be a new normal or will it be something in between what we knew earlier and what we're seeing today? I think that 70 percent of industry cannot work from home. Right. If you're in distribution, if you're in hotels, all these things. If you're in my business, you can work from home, but only part of the time. Because I see that people have a tendency to work more independently. I need team. Also, there's a sense of sort of social um, lack of lack of kind of feeling in in a in a real world. <laughs> um, right. it, it, it makes you kind of a loner. And, and so our business depends on creativity, which depends on connectivity, which depends on human uh, interaction. interaction. And I can't wait myself to come back to India, see you guys, um, and come see my people. I, it's driving me crazy. I haven't been on the road since March at all. I drove right. to Washington last week, four hours down, four hours down back in one day for some meetings. But that's it. That's my only contact. Right. And uh, how, are you scheduled to have a vaccination? Do you know oh, the I'll date? I'll take it tomorrow. You got one, I'll do it. <laughs> Let's uh, okay. go. I'm rolling with my sleeve right now. <laughs> no, but uh, what's it like in New York? Are you scheduled to get it soon? 
I don't think so, because right. um, it's going to be for the health workers, for the uh, police and firemen, for the people who are um, older and have had a previous condition, heart disease or something else. And I'm pretty healthy. And so I won't get it, I don't think, until uh, May or June. OK, fantastic. So cheers, uh, Richard, as always. Uh, thank you for a fantastic conversation. And I hope uh, you, your family, and your company and all your friends have a fantastic 2021. Listen, my friend, um, we have fought through this year, and I thank you for having me on as always. And that was Richard Edelman sharing how businesses need to redefine their role and earn consumer trust in these unprecedented times. Let's take a look at the Mel Cheat Sheet. Businesses in India need to work harder to get their stories across. Indian companies need to show that they are globally competitive. Media should be driven by news and not tweets. Media companies need to tell facts and quality information. With that, it's a wrap on this episode of Melt. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Our handle is ready to melt And stay connected with our daily Melt update on our website, readytomelt.com. I'll see you next week, same time, same place. Goodbye.